Hey friends, welcome back to another episode of the Robin Graham show. I am here today with Nathan Bynum and we are going to talk about breaking down creative campaigns that convert. We are, I think going to have a really great conversation, but it's a conversation we haven't actually had on the show. And so we're going to learn some new insights in terms of marketing. We're going to talk about guerrilla marketing. So if you haven't heard that term before, you may want to grab a notebook and start taking notes. Otherwise, you can always look at the show notes because all the details and links and everything will be there for you to access. But Nathan is an author and a guerrilla marketer. He is also a soon-to-be world record holder. So we will let him tell you a little bit more about that and give you the deets so that you can maybe check him out, follow him and see what adventures are coming his way in August. Nathan Bynum, welcome to the Robin Graham show. Thanks for having me on Robin. I'm excited to be here and have this conversation with you. Yeah, it's going to be fun. So you started out your career as like a web designer and you have learned everything that you're going to teach us today by doing it for yourself first. And I personally love that perspective because that's how I've built my business. When we are in the trenches, learning something day by day, I think every single one of those experiences that happen for us along our journey, enable us to then teach others and not only teach, but inform, educate on a deeper level so that we can make the lives of other people easier. So I'm excited to learn from you and I'm excited to share you with the listeners. But before we dive into this really great conversation, can you please tell the listeners a little bit about you and your journey to where, what brought you to where you are today? Yeah, you mentioned the web design business before. It started out like a year and a half ago, whenever I wrote my book and I was figuring out like what I had, what values I could bring to the world. And so I was documenting the things that I was learning as I was going and then wound up putting that in a book format and then wound up branching off to doing some web design because I was pretty good at that from building my website and working on other people's and helping some of my friends. And so I started turning that into a business. And then it wasn't until a few months ago, whenever I realized that I had been following the steps verbatim from this course that I was taking on growing your online business. And then I realized that I wasn't using any of my creativity that I use in other areas of my life, which is, I would say, one of my biggest strengths. And so I began trying to think of a way to grow my email list for my web design business. And so I made myself think of 10 ideas each day for about a week because I got this 10 ideas a day creatively from James Altucher's book, Skip the Line. Mm -hmm. And so I was doing that. And then eventually I thought of doing a Guinness World Record because the name of my business is Lemon Launch and the world record involves launching lemons. And so then I decided that to benefit other people while doing this and to gain exposure for that. I partnered up with a lot of the business owners that I've been privileged to meet and they had different audiences. And so then they also had different resources and different specialities that they were able to donate to people who are watching the live stream or coming to Lakeland to watch it too. And so it's a way that kind of got me into the grill marketing because what I was really passionate about was like using that creativity. And that is when I started doing some campaigns of my own. And then I did one for the local city. And that is how we have come here today. Okay. So for the sake of the listeners, anyone who has not heard of guerrilla marketing before, will you explain to us exactly what that is, please? Yeah, I started looking at what materials they were out there on it, and there's a lot of stuff on it, but it's outdated and it's a lot of it is more generic. And so I was trying to break it down into like ways that I could convey to other people and that I could systematize myself. And so that basically boils down into three things, which would be plot, act, and direct. 
And the first part plot is your creativity. And then the second part is project management. And then the third is a good crew. And then act is the second, which is broken down into understanding your audience, engaging and remarkable. And then direct will be broken down into highlighting your unique value proposition, a clear specific call to action and being prepared for the next steps. So it's not just think of something creative and throw it out there and hope that it sticks, hope that it works. Like it's systematized so that you can look at the process and you can see what the variables are and what, where the breakdown may be if it doesn't perform as well as you want it to. So that's the overarching idea of guerrilla marketing. Okay. So let's dissect these. Okay. So if we're going to dissect plot, tell us what we need to be thinking about from a strategic perspective to make sure that our plot, air quotes there, is good. Plot is broken down into creativity, project management, and a good crew. And so the first part of that is the creativity, which all of us are born with huge amounts of creativity. And it is sadly beaten out of us as we go throughout life. And we, a lot of us tend to look at the standard operating procedures of whatever market we're in or whatever area of expertise we're trying to pursue, like whether it's like through the schooling system or through just looking at what there is. And there are definitely places that needs to be, but whenever it comes to marketing and standing out, that is the furthest place that you want to do all of those things. Like you want to find what makes you unique. Like we all have some kind of superpower and like whenever I'm doing my thing, like I try to be creative and I also try to make people smile. What is that? What is he doing there? A couple of weeks ago, I built a vending machine and I was inside of it. And then it was like promoting the world record. And on the front of it, it said, when life gives you a lemon, grow your business. And then there's like a button that people could press and people were like, they could see me like through the crack in the cardboard and they're like smiling big and like taking pictures and everything. That is one of the things that I was trying to convey through that. So whatever your superlative is, whatever you are the best at, that is where the creativity and that's where like the later on your unique value proposition will come from. But whenever you're brainstorming the creativity that is where that is stemmed from and then the second part would be project management and that is like whenever I'm doing something I have a huge whiteboard in my room and it's like the visualization of how everything can come together like some people may prefer digital some people may prefer to write it down on a notebook like more thinking laterally, but I think everybody could benefit from some sort of big dashboard that you can see how all the little components come together so you can see what you may be missing. And then the third part of plot is a good crew, which that is like the people that you hire, the people that will be out in the streets that are helping you. Like I wouldn't be able to do a lot of the grill marketing things that I do like just completely by myself like you you have to have another set of eyes on it they can see like through the plot holes like they can see what you may be missing and then like I said everybody has their strengths so they're able to contribute to that to make it even better I love that so when you're talking about this Nathan are you talking more about in person or can this plot idea be adapted to digital marketing the online space Yeah, so it can be for either one. For instance, like there's a couple of ways that you can approach it. One can be looking at different platforms that people in your industry use and either using a different platform or using the one that you're most comfortable with, but using it in a different way. If you are wanting to send out an email and you're wanting to do it a little bit differently, this was from... Mike Michalowicz, I think that's how you say his name. He mentioned this in his book and he said that whenever he was sending out an email, he did it in invisible ink. 
And the reason like the, that worked is because the tagline was this message is invisible. And so people are going to want to click on that. And then there's nothing there except for click on the top left and highlight down. And so you'll be able to see it because it was written in white text. So you can definitely adapt this to anything that you're trying to do. It's the same principles and it's the same for project management, like laying out your funnels, laying out anything, and then having people to look over that. I know you wrote a book recently, so I'm sure that there were people that you got to read it, you got to look at it, edit it, whatever. Mm -hmm. And so like it, it applies to whatever you're trying to do, but it also applies to in-person, obviously. Yeah. Okay. I love this. And listeners, I just want to say, I'm going to link in the show notes, the episode where I interviewed my friend, Alex, who is a musician and artist, and she's a creativity coach, because as Nathan said, we oftentimes lose our sense of creativity because of all the chaos in our lives. And just a lot of times I think as we're growing up and as we face different circumstances in life, our creativity is sometimes squashed and it ends up hiding inside of us. So I'm going to link that episode so you can go back and listen to that and learn how to tap into your creative resources as well. Okay. So Nathan, let's move on to act. Yeah. The first part of act is understanding your audience, which is incredibly important for anything, especially if you're going to put like a lot of time into it. And so You can figure out like going back to whenever I was writing my book, for example, I knew like who, what books that I was reading to learn more about goal setting and about habits and everything. And I looked in the comments of books that were similar to mine that I was reading about and looking at the negative reviews, looking at the positive reviews so I could add things or take away things from my book and make sure to have the positive ones in there. So just like finding where your audience hangs out, like finding different Facebook groups, finding whatever reviews there are like on different products that you know that your ideal clients would be using. So understanding their pain points, understanding what their passions are and being able to implement that into either whatever your call to action is or whatever that interactive thing with them would be. And that brings it to the second part of act, which is engaging. And that is because whenever people are able to engage, whenever people are like pressing the button and getting a bag with a lemon and business information in it, they're able to connect with you on a deeper level. And they're also a lot more willing to post it on their social because they're having this unique experience that a lot of their friends are not able to. And so then they're excited about that. They're able to get something physical or some kind of digital thing if that's the route you're going. And then remarkable is the third part, which I chose this word specifically because if you break it down into the parts, it's remark able. So it is something that you are wanting to make a remark about. It's not just like the average run the mill thing that you see every day that we're bombarded with like thousands of ads and just like all these things that you can turn off in your mind because it's just that it's going to be there. It's something that stands out. It grabs them. It's weird or it's exciting or whatever the superlative you choose is whatever that one thing is, then you are wanting to tell people about it. It's that word of mouth marketing. It's so powerful because it's having somebody who we trust that Mm -hmm. tells us about it instead of having those like seven touches of marketing to do it. So it breaks through that barrier. Yeah. And you said so many things just then too. So when we talk about engagement and just a presence on social media, you've mentioned social media a few times throughout the conversation, but having that connection, building an emotional connection with your audience, the people that you want to connect with is so incredibly important for building the relationships because without those two things, we can't build trust and trust determines buying practices. So if you aren't engaging and you aren't 
including something remarkable in your messaging that differentiates you, that shows how you are unique. You're not going to be able to attract the right people so that they understand exactly what it is you do and how you can solve that problem that they have. And you can solve it in a unique way that is specific to them. Okay. I love everything you just said. It's so on target. Okay. So we are ready to move on to direct. Yep. Okay. So direct is broken down into highlight your unique value proposition, clear, specific call to action and being prepared for the next steps. So back to our unique value proposition. It's not just something that you're good at. It's Disney isn't the a happy place on earth. It's the happiest place on earth. Or if you think about like Amazon, not just like decently fast shipping that I'll get pretty soon. It's like they have one day shipping. They have two day shipping. They're like a, a market cap on that. Like you think about that fast shipping or you think about Walmart for the cheapest. And so figuring out like what your strength is like a year and a half ago, whenever I wrote my book, I was very overcompensating for the fact that I was 24 and I grew out my beard and I had a Sunday morning shirt on to take a picture for my about me page and for the page that I was having in the book, like the author to try to make myself look older. But it wasn't until I was talking to John Davis that he was telling me that my strength was in some ways, my age, because I was able to have a different perspective than other people and a lot of things. And writing the book, I was like in the trenches while I was figuring it out instead of two decades later, like looking back retrospectively. So it's like a different angle. So thinking about that and thinking about maybe I wouldn't have as much creativity if I didn't express it at this age as then I would a little bit later on, it would take a little longer for me to gain that back. And so we all have that strength. We all have that thing that sets us apart. And me trying to hide behind my beard and Sunday morning shirt, that was not going to authentically connect me to the people who would actually resonate with me. So being professional is great for some people. I don't necessarily resonate with that as much. Like I wear chacos most of the places, like I wear shorts, but it's that thing that makes you feel more yourself. And if you don't really know what that is, then just ask your friends, ask your family how you make them feel. And then you'll get more of an idea of what that is for you and Mm -hmm. able to implement that into your marketing. And so I'm going to interrupt you for just one second, because what you're describing is your personal brand. So your personal brand is what other people think, say, and feel about you. Your branding efforts are how you differentiate yourself, how you show what makes you unique, right? And so every single person who has a business has a personal brand. Like it is you and you want to control that perception that other people have of you. That's what you were doing by putting on that Sunday shirt. When the reality is, if you are authentically and genuinely yourself, that's how you're going to resonate with your audience, those people that are your soulmate clients that are going to, it's going to fill you to work with them and it's going to serve a purpose for them. So I think that's just a really important message. And I'll actually link, I have a whole episode on personal branding that I'll put a link to the show notes in for that too, because I think that's a very specific takeaway that people can have from what you just said. Okay. So go ahead now, clear, concise call to action. Yeah. So the clear specific call to action would be whatever you want them to do next. Like, great, you have this campaign, whether it's online or whether it's in person, you have this campaign, but what do you want them to do next? That is where a lot of the hangup comes from a lot of people. You need to tell them where to go. They're not going to ask you like, okay, what's next? You want to have some sort of thing, whether it is growing your email list, which is for a lot of people a big thing or whether it's growing a specific social media like having that as like the call to action whether it is something other than that like you just need to know what that is for you and then be able to implement that into the whole marketing regime and 
having a good reason for them to do that because people aren't just going to follow you for no reason. People aren't just going to give you their email for no reason. Like you have to give them a lot of value for that. And so having like free PDFs or checklists, like those are big things that a lot of people do or having some kind of raffle or giveaway. If somebody like follows you and shares you on social media, whatever that is, make sure to implement that into whatever the marketing campaign is. Absolutely. And I think having a, you say clear and specific. Now, one thing that I did wrong when I first started my business would, I would have options for a call to action. And all that does is create confusion and confused people do not buy. So it is really important to have one call to action versus having multiple options because people aren't going to know what you want them to do. If you're giving them three options, they're not going to know what's the best one for them. And they're not going to know what they should air quotes do. So I think that's really important to designate that it's clear and specific what you want them to do to eliminate confusion. Yeah, that's a good point. That's another thing that I see like a lot of people doing is like they'll list all of these options, like whether they have a link tree and they like have all these things. A lot of times overwhelming for me, like maybe not for everybody, but like seeing all those things, like I a lot of times just click back. And then the third part would be being prepared for the next steps. And this is where a lot of the power comes in. Like it's a little bit different than the call to action because being prepared for the next steps encapsulates the long-term journey that you are going to be helping your customer, your clients go on. And it's the long-term transformation that they're going to be able to see throughout this. And that, that is having like the vision that's plotting it out in the future. It's not just being transactional. It's not just like, how can I make money in the next couple of weeks? Like it's looking at like where it would be best for them to go and having that lined up in the back end. A lot of the real marketing things, like you can see them on the front end. That's where a lot of the focus is, but having that in the back end to understanding, okay, they're going to experience this. They're going to have this call to action. We're going to create this like connection with them, but how am I going to serve them in the long run? And that is the last part of what the campaign is. Yeah, I love that. And that goes right along if we circle all the way back up to building the relationships. So it it really does come full circle as well as those visualizations. So when you are doing the project management back in the plot phase of the campaign, you're actually visualizing the journey that your client's going to go on. And so you can provide them with a better journey, more transformative journey, like you said. Okay, Nathan, this was fabulous. Thank you so much. Any last words of wisdom that you want to share with the listeners? Yeah, the most important message that I hope that people take away from this is not to be afraid of being yourself. Like there's plenty of people who are going to love you and love what you do based on what true values that you have and trying to take on the persona of somebody else that you see that you perceive as being successful that is not going to garner success to you it's not ever going to be very fulfilling so like i save my sunday morning shirts for sundays now and just like (laughs) (laughs) figuring out what that thing is for you. Like it's going to work if you are authentic and you provide value to others. Yeah. Adhering to your values is the number one key for achieving success, because if you're not adhering to your values, people will see right through that. And you're going to end up so frustrated compared to when you're aligned with your values, you're living right. You're living the way that you're destined, that you should be, that God's called you to do. And that makes all the difference in the world with how you resonate with your audience and connect with the right people. Okay. Nathan, thank you so much for being here. It was really a pleasure and I enjoyed our conversation. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. Listeners, if you got a lot of value from this episode, which I cannot imagine that you did not, will you please share it with your friends, family, anyone who is starting a business or in the throes of entrepreneurship, but could use a little bit of insight and 
maybe a little push to do things a little bit differently to be more effective in their business. Please share the episode. And of course, a rating and review would be so appreciated and it will help us spread the word to more people at a deeper level. So thanks so much for being here and I will see you next week.